there are lots and lots of scenarios like this one where you have two different data tables and your job is to figure out which items do or don't match between the two. And Power Query has a really nice set of tools called merges that you can use to make this happen really quickly. Let me talk about a couple of different types of merges that you're going to see. Now, when we do a merge in Power Query, we use different join types. Their different join types are inner, outer, and anti-joins with either a left or a right modifier. So what does that actually mean? Well, first of all, when we talk about tables, there's always a left table and a right table, and you don't have to worry too much about this. Left just means first and right just means second. So anytime that you see a left outer join or a right outer join, it has to do with the first table or the second table. Now the first type of join that there is, is what's known as a full outer join. And a full outer join says, yeah, it's great if there are matches, but ultimately at the end of the day, I want absolutely everything that's in the first table and absolutely everything that's in the second table. So this is good for some scenarios where you're just trying to mash the whole thing together, but most of the time I'm looking for something a little bit more specific. So the first type of join that I use all the time is what's known as a left outer join. This is basically the same thing as what VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, and INDEX and MATCH do for you in Excel, where you have this first table and you go looking for matches in the other table. And if there are matches, that's great. And if there aren't matches, then you don't throw those entries away, but you just say, oh, I guess there aren't any matches for these. So this is what's known as a left outer join, meaning we keep everything from the first table, and an outer join, meaning everything from the first table. There's also a right outer join, but almost nobody ever uses it because it just means we're doing the same thing, but with the second table instead of the first table. Why not just make it the first table every time? Now, something that I find very useful, though, is what's known as an inner join. So an inner join is something you can't really do with a VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, or INDEX and MATCH, where you say, hey, just show me those entries from the left-hand table that have matches from the right-hand table. Exclude everything that doesn't have matches. And its partner is then the anti-join. The anti-join shows you everything that doesn't have matches. So if the inner join shows you only those things that do have matches, then the anti-join shows you only those things that don't have matches. And again, same way, we always use the left anti-join and never the right anti-join because you might as well just use the first table because you can make anything the first table if you want it to. So let's see this in real life then. As you can see, we have Peter Winter and Peter Winter, Dario Villa and Dario Villa, Shanyo and Shanyo, but there are clearly fewer entries in this table than there are in this one. And there's probably some entries in this table that aren't in this one and some entries that are in this table that aren't in this one. So what we need to do first is use Power Query to pull both of these two tables in. I'm going to click onto the left-hand table here, go to my Data tab at the top of the screen, and click on From Table Slash Range, and that will bring our first table into the Power Query editor. You'll see I named that table Registrations. So there's everybody's first and last names and their email addresses. Now I need to go back to my spreadsheet and pull in the other table, and I don't really want to drop this table into a second spot in my spreadsheet. So on the Home tab at the top of the screen, I'm going to use the Close and Load drop-down menu and choose Close and Load 2, because this way I can select the option that says just make a connection. Uh, you don't have to put this in a second table or a pivot table or anything like that. So I choose only create connection and click OK. And now I'm going to repeat that exact same process for the table on the right. I'm going to click on to the table on the right, click on from table slash range, pulling in the attendees table. 
And I'm going, going to click on close and load, close and load two, and load it only as a connection and click OK. So over here on the right hand side, I can see that I have those two data tables, the registrations table and the attendees table, uh, but I'm not doing anything with them just yet. So let's go over here to the right hand side, double click on registrations, and let's keep it very simple. The first thing I'm interested in is how many people who registered definitely showed up. Now, of course, the problem here is that in the registrations table, everybody's first and last name are separate, whereas in the attendees table, they're together separated by a comma and a space. So let's make a matching column in the registrations table very quickly here. All you have to do is click on to the last name column, hold down the control key and click on the first name column. Power Query will remember that you clicked on last name before first name. And then on the add column tab at the top of the screen, I'm going to choose merge columns and I'm going to specify that the separator between these two should be a custom separator and that will be comma space and the new column name will be employee name. So now I have an employee name column here, which is the compiled data of the two columns. And I have the attendees, which has the name column. And what I'm looking for here is how many people have perfect matches. So I'll go to my registrations table, go to my home tab at the top of the screen, and I'm looking for a way to merge these two queries together. Now specifically, I'm going to choose not to merge them into the registrations table, but instead make a new table out of the result. So merge the two queries and make a new table as a result of it. So I'll click here on merge queries as new. And I have the registrations table and here I have the attendees table. And all I have to do is specify that the employee name column here and the name column here are the same or the ones that should have the matches. And you can see that this will be 13 out of 25 matches. But if you remember what we talked about, a left outer join contains everything from the left hand table. And I actually don't want that. Instead, I'm going to use the drop down menu and choose an inner join. There we go. And click OK. And as you can see here, this list of people has exact matches in the attendees table. If you want to see that, you can click here on the expander button and bring in the name and the sign in. I'll click OK here. And you can see that, yes, Dario and Shah and Marion and Roger are all perfect matches between the two tables. I'm going to double click on the name of this table and I'm going to call this one uh, attending registrants, but I'm not done yet. I need to do more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the people who registered who didn't attend. Then I'm going to look for the people who attended who didn't register. And finally, I'm going to look for people who did register and it's possible that they attended, but we didn't catch them correctly. So let's start off with people who registered who did not show up. We can go back to our registrations table over here on the left, hit merge queries drop down menu again, merge queries as new, and we're going to merge the registrations table with the attendees table. But on the join kind drop down menu, I will switch to a left anti-join so that I find out who was registered in the registrations table but was not in the attendees table. And you can see here that of the 25 people in the first table, again that left table or the top one, 13 of them had matches so they're excluded from the anti-join. So when I click OK, this is the list of people who do not have a match in the other table. So I'll double click here and I will call this one registrants without attendance. And let's go the opposite direction. 
Let's go back to registrants again. Go back to the Merge Queries drop-down menu, Merge Queries as New, and we'll sync up the employee name column here with the attendees table name column, and we'll switch over to the right anti-join. So those people who are in the attendees table, but we're not in the registrants table. So I click OK, and this, as you can see, has nobody from the first table, but if I use the little expander button here and click OK, these are everybody from the f second table who weren't in the first table. See, there's no matches over here. I can double click here and call this one attendees without registrations. But there is a little gotcha here. So I specifically went through this list. Pete Winter, Tom McDonald, Katie Copeland, and Julia Vandermeer right here if you go back to the original registration table, you find out that Pete's name is actually Peter. You find out that Tom's name is actually Thomas. And you find out that Julia Vandermeer actually writes her name as Van space Der space Mir. And that means that they should kind of match, right? Pete should match with Peter and Tom should match with Thomas and Julia should match with Julia. But they don't, and that's because um, they're not an exact match. But instead, what we'll do is we will use a fuzzy match. So we go to our registrations table. We go to the uh, Merge Queries drop-down menu. Merge Queries is new. And we're going to do a merge between the registrations table and the attendees table on the employee name column here. And this time around, I'm going to leave it as a left outer join, but I'm going to click the checkbox here to use fuzzy matches. And notice that immediately you see a difference. If I don't click the checkbox for use fuzzy matching, it says we've got 13 matches. But as soon as I click that checkbox, it says, ah, now I've got 16 matches. So here, under the fuzzy matching options, you can specify whether you want to ignore the case, whether you want to combine different text parts together, and also whether you want to specify a similarity threshold. Now, the similarity threshold, if you want to play around with this, is a number between 0 and 1, where 0 means that there's effectively no similarity between the two, and 1 means there's effectively perfect similarity between the two. And so, you know, a 0.5 or a 0.4 will get you close matches, maybe, or relatively similar matches, but not perfect matches. But as you can see, even without putting a number value in here, that still got me my three additional matches that I was talking about. So I can click OK here, and here expand this out. And I can see that with the defaults, Pete matches with Peter, that, uh, where is it? That Katie matches with Kate, and Julia Vandermeer matches with Julia Vandermeer. But if you notice, Thomas McDonald did not match with Tom. That was the one that I missed. So over here on the right, I have the gear for the expanded attendees and the gear for the source. I click on the gear for the source and it says right now we're using left outer join fuzzy match and I can come in here and I can specify different number values. So I'm hoping for 17 matches instead of 16. So maybe I'll put in a 0.4 as the similarity threshold and there it is. You see that it's now gone up from 16 matches to 17 matches. I like to say that this is not an exact science. I know that behind the scenes it is an exact science, but for you and I trying this, it's really difficult to figure out what number value is going to result in the right number of matches. So experiment with it, see how close the matches actually are. And when I click OK and I move forward to expanded attendees, you see there that Tom McDonald matches up with Tom McDonald, and we do still have these folks who have no matches at all. So at that point, we can use the drop down menu here and filter out the nulls, the people who don't match, and I'll rename this query 
registrants with fuzzy match for cleanup. And what's nice about this is now that I have these different tables, I can simply go to my home tab at the top of the screen, click on the close and load button, and each one of those tables will be dropped on its own page. So here is the registrants with the fuzzy match table where Thomas and Tom are connected together. Here is the attendees without registrations where the people who did not match originally show up. Here's the registrants with attendance where the uh, actual matches show up, etc.